These latest findings indicate the problem has worsened. From Hollywood to Venice Beach, scenes from what could be a disaster movie. Giving homes to the homeless? Elvis Summers is spending his time and his own money building tiny houses for the homeless. Originally, I just wanted to uh, build a woman named Smokey a, a micro shelter. I, I just looked at some of the houses in the neighborhood and, you know, mod modeled it after those. Okay. Um, okay. Slapped together, you know, a crude little shed and, um, you know, locked her up. She slept for a day and a half the first night. They, they tried to shut me down and just give those, you know, boilerplate answers in the beginning. After a while, um, and some threats, <laughs> I, I had to wear a bulletproof vest for a year. And one, one guy, he put it like this. He just said, you know, I've been here 30 years and I've seen a lot of things and things happen. Things happen to people like you. How did you do what you did? And why? Our society is, you know, pretty messed up, and we, we do some pretty horrific things to each other. And uh, I, I just, you know, I want things to be better. Where I ask my guests, how did you do it, and why? So, um, well, listen, uh, Elvis Summers. Um, I thought for a little while, you, you know, I was like, Elvis, last night I had to actually go online to realize your name was Elvis Summers. I was like, what the fuck? That's kind of stupid. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you've put a lot of your life into a pretty cool uh, project that I'm impressed by. And I think very quickly, uh, I'd love to have our audience know just, just what is that in, in a rough description. Not a rough description, a detailed description. The Tiny House Project? Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Well, um, it's a nonprofit that I started. Mm -hmm. I want over. to re repeat that name just because I think it's, I want to make sure our audience hears it. Sure. The Tiny House Project. Right on. Um, mm -hmm. Is a nonprofit I started roughly eight and a half years ago. Uh huh. Um, originally, I just wanted to uh, build a woman named Smokey a, a micro shelter. Like, yeah. I just wanted to help her out. She lived in my, my South Los Angeles neighborhood. I, I listened to her. That was, she's a pretty. Uh, well, anyway, go ahead. She, she was a remarkable woman. Um, sadly, she's passed on now. I miss her a lot. But yeah, she, yeah. she was a cool lady. And, and uh, But that's she's the reason I got started in well, building these tiny houses. What did she bring that brought you the reason? What do you mean? I mean, what, what you know, there's a lot of people out there that you can meet. But what made her the person that inspired you? She was just a, you know, a cool chick. Like she she'd come by, you know, my house uh, all the time asking for recyclables. Mm -hmm. Um and uh you know, so I'd save them up and give them to her and I'd just shoot the shit with her every time she came by. And mm -hmm. uh I I like to know people's stories. I like to know where people came from, you know, mm -hmm. and why. I like to know the the hows and whys in life. Oh, well, so, you, I don't know, you, well we'll get around to it, but <laughs> you know, the title of this thing is how do you do it and why? So for the same great curiosity in people i just think it's really cool but let's let's go on so it's irene right as i recall irene from the video yeah um and uh so now she's the springboard for something that becomes a profound a profound part a profound pardon me uh part of your life Why don't you tell us a little bit more about that yeah so like while we hung out whenever she'd come by you know i finally just asked her like what her story was you know where, where you know i know that you're you're houseless but where you know where do you sleep and um, she just, uh, slept down the block, um, on a two foot strip of dirt next to a house. Um, you know, and I, I figured there'd be some, some sort of makeshift, you know, shelter, even a giant, you know, box or something. Tent of anything? Nothing. No, just, she just, just, there was a broken wooden <clears throat> chair. Um, and she just slept face first in the dirt. You know, nobody bothered her there. The, mm -hmm. the, the people that, you know, lived in that building didn't care, so... But it got me thinking, like, why does nobody mm -hmm. care, you know? His grandma's, like, face first in the dirt, and, you know, everybody in the neighborhood likes her. Say, ah, hi, Smokey, hi, Smokey, you know, when she'd come by. But nightfall, nobody cared. So it, I, it just got under my skin, and, I, you know, I've done construction a bunch in life, so I was like, you know, I could slap together a little shelter. I saw people in um, Oregon, you know, building these uh, tiny houses. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, you know, that's easy. I can do that. Um, so I said, you know, Hey Smokey, what, you know, how you, how would you feel if I built you a little micro house? And she just, you know, eyes just got wide and she said, when's it going to be ready? You then step in and feel this becomes the catalyst for you doing what you're doing now. Totally. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, I, I went to, I went to uh, Home Depot 
and you know took 500 bucks and just went and bought a bunch of you know material yeah and um i i tried i i you know i lived in a crappy uh apartment you know in south la I, we got no room or anything mm -hmm. um so i tried to like find driveways or parking lots or so, just somewhere with a little space that i could build her this little this little hut um, but no, you know, nobody wanted to help. Nobody cared. Do it now, you know, kick rocks. Whatever. Yeah. yeah what are so, you doing? So I just, you know, I was like, you know what? I don't give a shit. I'm just, I started, uh, just building it in the street in front of, you know, in front of my house. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, while I was doing that though, other houseless, uh, people started coming up saying, Hey man, you know, can, can you build me one of those? I got nowhere to go to. So I said, all right, let me, let me just film this, you know, I'll throw it up on online and try this crowdfunding thing I've I've seen. I didn't know much about it. Mm -hmm. um, threw it up and and uh, forgot about it. You know, yeah. finished. Uh, how big are these things? Uh, you know, well, I, Smokies was micro. I mean, it was four by eight and maybe you know f maybe four and a half feet tall. So just enough to get in somewhere and lie down and be yep. undercover. Yep, just enough to crawl in, lie down, lock you know, lock the door. And, yeah, uh, I noticed that you had a good lock and safety and so on. Yeah, I just took a, a steel reinforced door that you'd have on any house, and I just you know hacked it in half and yeah, you know somewhere I mean better than out on the street, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't um, you know I wasn't going for a builder of the year, you know. Yeah, yeah. I just um, I I just looked at some of the houses in the neighborhood and you know mod modeled it after those. Okay, um, okay. Slapped together you know a crude little shed and. Um, you know, locked her up. She slept for a day and a half the first night. You know, just she, in there, just boom. Yeah, I mean, just like you know, light. when you're when you're out on the streets, um, you got to keep one eye open. You know, for multiple reasons. It's yeah. you know, it's a dangerous place to be. So, I like that. What's that show? The White Underbelly. Oh, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very. He just takes people in and does interviews in front of just a pretty much a stark background. Yeah, my wife. My wife loves that show. Yeah, yeah. I've watched <laughs> it quite a bit. It's um, it's in it's. It's, I hate to say entertaining, but it's educational and it sure. creates real empathy. But at the same time, it's like, whoa, you know, right. you want to watch the next one. Right, but let's sure. get back to, so we got a four by eight. Yeah. Which tiny, is pretty tight. Tiny little micro hut. I put I put it on wheels so we can move it around. I saw that, yeah. And, um, uh, you know, and I like I said, I forgot about the video I posted up and, mm -hmm. and then I think it took a couple days, but- all of a sudden, you know, the notifications on my phone, I just, you know, annoying. Like, what? <laughs> Who the hell is texting me so much? What is the fire, you know? And like yeah. looking and just like, come on. And like, it's it's spam, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, yeah, like, I'm just like, up. why is this beeping so much? Come on. You know, and, um, you know, I start looking in and I'm like, it's just like, just flooding thousands of notifications i'm like this what, what the hell is going on you know have i been hacked what you know <laughs> and uh you know but you look in and it's like wait a minute like when i go and look and it's like several thousand views you know and you wait you know 10 minutes and you go and all of a sudden it's tens of thousands of views and you're like the hell is going that, on yeah, this that is must nuts. have been pretty exciting it and pretty was cool. super cool i mean man. you must have been just like i yeah. mean what a what a uh, validation of your 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 thought yeah, you know, it was cool, um, and it just, yeah, it, it went viral. I mean, it just you know, it just grew hundreds of thousands, millions, you know. And I'm just, I like, saw one was wow. one one point six million. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, there's I, like I collectively, know. there's hundreds of millions of views on everything. Um, really, there were a few, um, whatever Facebook pages at the time that, um, that you know, saw the the several million, like low millions, you know, views of the video. And uh, just say, oh, this is great. We want to post it. And so they would post it. But these little pages had hundreds of millions of followers. So, um, yeah, then it just went, you know, it went all So wait, you're married this time, right? You're married. Now I am. No, <laughs> at the time this went blast <laughs> off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just took off. So you didn't become like, like Hollywood hero and like go maybe split from her and marry like a young... Hollywood actress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It just uh but I mean it but it yeah, it was just super exciting, you know. It just took off and um and it, and and so did the the funds. People You did like a what a crowd fund or whatever mm -hmm. those things are online. Yeah, they, I did, they I did, I did a GoFundMe and it and it just I think in the first month I think we pulled in 125,000. Holy shit. Yeah. Cuz I, mean, I heard it once. I thought I heard I'm poor, man. That's the most <laughs> money I've ever seen. I'm like <laughs> 
<laughs> damn, you know, it's like, all right, like, you know, but I'm, I'm like, if people are gonna give you know, me money like, to like help other things, people, like, I'll do this pa- all day long. <laughs> Pack up and just go to an island. <laughs> I'm right. out of here. Right. Hey, yeah. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> yeah. built one house for 500 bucks and I'm out. Right. So, so now you get, wow, so you get a buck 25. That is, that's a lot of money in anybody's life. Yeah, it, it was um, fantastic, man. And it was super exciting and, you know, and, and it's overwhelming too. Cause it's like, you know, I've, I've never managed that much, Yeah, you know? So it yeah. was like, um, shit, what do I do now? And, um, you know, and then, and then right away I was just like, oh man, like we're going to, I'm going to build so many of these and. But it's like, okay, wait a minute, where are we going to put them? You know, so, um, I mean. Were you making them still just yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's a slow, pr- I mean, it's obviously, you know, like in biz, like in any production, you know, it's like, how many can you get more? We need more. Totally. And it's yeah. like you. Well, but it, but it was great because when you, when you have the resources, whatever that be, um, you know, the options are endless. So, sure. you know, I, you know, just took. 500 bucks on my own to start Smokies. And I mean, I, you know, I would have struggled for a couple months to, you know, on that, from that $500. You know? I thought I saw on one of the, you had $10,000, but obviously I was wrong. I, well, there, 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 I mean, we had several different ones going, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, collectively it all, okay. you know, piled up. But um, yeah, I mean, Smokies was the smallest. Um, but when all that, you know, money and resources came in, I was like, great. Like, let's, let's build them bigger. So I then switched to the most common model, which is either six by eight or eight by eight. I did six by eights because I built a custom trailer and winch system that I could, you know, in case I had no help, I could load and unload myself. Okay. Um, and it fit on the trailer that way. Um, I saw the tra- I saw that the mobility was pretty cool. Yeah. So we, you know, I just started building them like that, and and um, and it took no, off. And I, me, I had eight, eight by you say eight by ten or eight by eight. I mean, they can be anything. Yeah, so I mean, because I know... Six by eight is the main ones I built for a long time. Yeah, because, well, the analogy... Well, the only one I really had a handle on was pretty small bedroom is 10 by 10. Sure. You know, not I don't know about small, but, you know, you come into a house and they say, oh, 10 by 10, and you're like, okay, I can get a single bed in there, you know, maybe some shit around it, but so... Yeah, but if you're if you're stuck with nowhere to go, oh, well, I'm, a, I'm a six listen. by eight structure is like a castle. Oh yeah, no, I uh-huh. I mean, what I'm getting at is you're not like sleeping on your side. <laughs> you right. know, it's not like you're a sardine. Right. right. You know, you're you're able to lie down, create some sort of um, sense of a home to it, and sure. and then you start putting in windows, didn't you? Yep. Right yeah, on. I mean, I I just made it like a like you would a normal house, just much smaller. You know. Hmm. Um. And then once again, how do you, how do you make? I know you had was it uh, alarms on the windows or yeah. something to that effect? Yeah, because I know you were, you know, obviously touting security, which is a big issue. And I know you it's had big, that big that, problem. Yeah, I know you had that big ass steel door, steel door, um, and that you know, obviously you can't get in there. I guess if a window breaks, the alarm goes flying off, and the, at least the, well, I guess that's better than being on the street. Absolutely. Well, there's and, no and, warning. And worst case scenario, it gives you enough time to call the cops and uh, you know and bang, say, bang. I, I need help. Nine one one. Someone's breaking into my, you know. Now it's a home. It's not like somebody's breaking into my tent. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but it's funny, you know, because um, for the longest time, um, you know, the city fought me. They tried to shut me down. They didn't. They just. I mean, initially they just didn't care. You know, I was a flea doing whatever, and they're just like, we don't care. Whatever, go away. You know. Um, and then they start to pay a little more attention and they're like, yeah, we don't like what you're doing. You because know? I saw, which is pretty cool, a whole handful of, um, uh, pretty hard, hardcore media, you know, kind of major stuff, uh, it were, you know, national news that was kind of touting what you were doing. Oh, I had global uh, news. Yeah, I it know. And you, you know, you were on stuff and I'm like, you know, psh, 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 you. and I'm thinking, oh man, this guy is, you know, first, my first thought is, oh man, he's getting a lot of money. You know, and then, you know, I, I, I got the sense that just from looking at you and hearing, you know, no, he you know, probably doesn't. Um, and then, you know, just having spoken to you here, it made it all the more impressive that, you know, <laughs> you don't make a lot of money doing this shit, but you know, <laughs> I don't all. make any money doing it. Yeah, I, I've been that, <laughs> working for no paycheck for eight and a half years. So that's a lot of time. Yeah. That's a lot of it's time. been really difficult, but that's, you know, 
I guess, you know, some things I learn really fast and other things take me a long time. Yeah, yeah. Taking a, taking a paycheck's, you know, been the hardest one, but, you know, I, I realize that, you know, I still got my own bills to pay. So well, you know, the, the, I, it's the time saying, that I do take a paycheck. That's coming next year. Yeah, you. Sh- I mean, you should because the saying is, you know, in, in a small business, you know, the captain has to be healthy. Right. And well fed. Yeah. That doesn't mean he has to be the happiest guy, but if he's up front saying, you know, go, go, go. We can't have him drop dead from hunger. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you know, we yep. need him. We need him alive. We need him to pay his bills. Yeah, my, my family's been yelling at me the whole time. Just like, dude, seriously, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I do the nonprofit work, but then I'm, I'm doing construction and gigs on the side just to, you know, to pay my own bills. But it's, you know, it's hard to manage both. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, I, in the I, future, I, it's uh, paychecks coming. Yeah, I, I also listen to sort of the onslaught of, you know, the complaining and the media some dude from the ninth district. So I'm always like, oh boy. Now you got the guy from the ninth district, and with all due respect, now we're now we're bringing in some people who are going to try and get some get some G man cash and <laughs> spread it around to their buddies and create, oh, yeah. you know, bureaucracy and come in and let's just grind it to a halt. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if, at first that uh, you know, like government, like their their number one go to is health and safety. Yep. You know, and, and like they hide behind that for everything. If there's anything they don't like, that's the first thing that comes out of their mouth. Oh, that's a health and safety hazard. And that's what they cried for a long time. And I'm like, wait a minute. A locked safe door inside a small room is a health and safety hazard compared to yesterday when their face was in the gutter. That's not a health and safety hazard, you know? And, yeah, yeah. And naturally, they don't have anything to say. They, you know, they just spit off uh, rhetoric. And so they... They just claim that for a long it's time. It's the same thing that we witnessed in Philly over 30 years of my life. There is, you know, literally, like uh, almost nothing changed. And yeah. there's well, they endless, don't like, they, you know, they don't like change. You yeah, know? there's endless discussion about it and endless tax money going in. Oh, yeah. And I know there are people with great hearts and souls in there working away. But if you step back, a hun- you know, 500 feet and look at it, you're like, well, what, got, what got better in some of these? I mean, I know the, you know, homicide rates went up. Right. I guess there's some argument there that it's because of the shitty conditions, but then I would say, well, oh, I don't know what I would say. Uh, who am I to say I actually know how to fix it? Um, but in the end, once I saw that set in on you, no, oh, that yeah. must have been frustrating. It was very frustrating. The, what What was worse is, you know, they they tried to shut me down and just give those you know boilerplate answers in the beginning. After a while, um, and some threats, <laughs> I, I had to wear a bulletproof vest for a year. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> what, what, what's this about? <laughs> I got, I got threatened um, both, both from people on the streets. Um, see, I help a lot of veterans, and veterans um, get their money on cards every month. And a lot of, uh, you know, gangbangers in the street know this, and so um, you know they'll kind of stake veterans out. And rob him every sure, month. Sure, well, you know? that's a good, 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 nice guy lying in the mud. Right. And hit him up. Right. Um, so, you know, when I started rescuing vets out there, they, you know, they were pissed I was taking their money, you know, but it's not their money. But, um, so I don't know, I got threats from that. And then I... Uh, Let me ask you, I, you're, you mustn't be living in a high rent district. No. Nah. <laughs> <I mean, just> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I live in the, um, I mean, I, I live in a little better na- neighborhood now, but, mm-hmm. you know, then I was in South LA, so it's, it's... it's Charming. Just, I've been there. Yeah, there's no... Lots of businesses. Well, well, I went sure. on sales calls. <laughs> yeah, bars and windows everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you, know. Yes, you know, you ride down those roads and you're like, been in big cities before, you're like, yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna just shuffle along. Yeah, here. yeah, totally. Yeah, just keep driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it... Um, you know, between uh, the threats from there, and and thankfully I had a, a few uh, friends um, in LAPD that uh, loved what I was doing, mm-hmm. um, and they were the ones that, that basically, you know, gave me the warning, um, you know, and the and the the heads up that uh, some people that don't this, like you. Yeah, a lot of people up like really don't like me. And, and one, one guy he put it like this: he just said, you know, I've been here thirty years, and I've seen a lot of things. And things happen. Things happen to people like you who, you know, because they're like, essentially, you're screwing with billions of dollars uh, and they don't like that. So he was like, you may want to put a vest on. And I was like, you kidding me? Like, is this a, you know, I'm like looking for the cameras, like, 
okay, you know, haha, funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, you got to be kidding me, dude. I was like, I'm just trying to help some people that are, you know, that, f- that fell down. And I'm like, how does that make me the asshole? Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. we used to have, you know, in business, we had this thing where I've talked to a few of my friends. When is it that somebody owes you money and then all of a sudden they're pissed at you for asking for it? <laughs> you know, you're like, hey, you owe me five thousand dollars. Yeah, okay. You, you know, am I gonna get that five thousand bucks? Uh-huh. Am I am I gonna get that five thousand bucks? And then you get, why are you such an asshole that you need the five thousand dollars? And you're like, <laughs> right? <laughs> just like, turn hey, how am I the jerk? Right. Yeah. So I guess with you, I'm kind of using the analogy that all of a sudden, this guy who's busting his ass trying to help out, he becomes the asshole. Yeah. Somehow, man. So, but I mean, like I said, thankfully, I I got the warning, you know, and uh, um. I went out and bought a vest, and um, which those things are expensive, by the way. Yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> stopping bullets is not, you know, this is Superman <laughs> shit. <laughs> it, it was weird. It, you know, it was just scary. Like, are um, they heavy? They're heavy. Yeah, yeah, they're they're heavy and then slightly uncomfortable. And yeah, um, never wore one. Thank God. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's like five minutes, you know, where you put it on, you're like, ha. You know. <laughs> Come on, shoot me, shoot me. Right, right, right. What's up now, <laughs> bitches? You know, like, mm. but then, you know, reality sets in and you're like, this is stupid and I don't want to wear this. And um, So, yeah, I don't know. But oh, it, they, I imagine they're hot as shit, too. Yeah, they get a little sweaty. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah, Especially just, in LA. You know, it's yeah, hot. It's better than dying. It's better than dying. Okay, so we'll wear it. Yeah, so I mean, it's just, you know, and but I'm, I'm blessed, you know. I had global media coverage and they just said keep doing what you're doing well how about when the politicians jumped in and tried to clog everything up they took your shit and pulled it away yeah they impounded uh illegally impounded a few of the houses but again i because i had global media coverage it was easy to call some people and say hey look what's happening here you know there's no due process they just you know despite how powerful they think they are or want to be you know you can't just roll up and steal someone's shit you know it's not how it works so, so they if, become the if, bad guys. If I hadn't, I mean, we we probably wouldn't be having this conversation if I didn't have all that media coverage. Who you was know? who was the one I saw? ITV from London. Mm. I think that was the name of it. Yeah, ITV. They're big. They're they, big in Europe. They, yeah. they, they were talking, you know, quite a bit about you, and I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And then obviously, all the little flashes. One one of them I was looking at was more of like a um, uh, like. Just on it was just like boom, 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 boom. All these different news stations. Oh yeah, all know. over the place. Man, I, at one point I was like collecting them. It felt cool, you know. Yeah, it was just like uh-huh. I'm like I don't even know what this is, but it's in Germany and it's cool. Like yeah, you yeah. know, why not? Really, it yeah. is cool. Well, I mean, it's great. Like I, I want to help people, and the more, you know, the more that people step in and and get involved, the, you know, the the more we can help. The more good things happen. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and 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 uh, you know that year was rough. But sure. after a while, um, you know, uh, the city actually finally called and said, why don't we work together instead? Oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. Very and I was cool. like, finally, you know, yeah, yeah. that was like four years in or something. Um, cause I saw like the mayor, I saw pe- the only part I saw, maybe I missed the good side was I saw a lot of speculation, uh, is this really the right thing to do? Maybe we should move all the houses and then move into houses. And that seemed to be about where my, where things ended for me, at least. Maybe there was another series of videos and handshaking about them getting involved. I don't know. I mean, there was a few. I, I kind of got burnt out on the, the media a bit um, later and, and just kind of fell off. And I just was like, I'm just going to work in the shadows and not post anything. Um so, I mean, there was a little bit, but they, uh, I mean, once we started working together, um, I mean, it was great. We like three and a half months, we, we were at city hall, just grinding and things out. This is the plan. This is how it works. This is how it's supposed to work. This is what doesn't work. Let me ask you a question. What's it like going, rolling into city hall and talking with those guys, you know, a guy like you, obviously you're not prepped from Harvard, ready to go in and <laughs> chat with them. Right. I mean, is it intimidating? Right. Or are you, hey, oh, how you doing? You, <laughs> how you doing? Huh? Oh, was, uh, hey, Joey Van Arkle. Right, right. <laughs> you yeah. know? Uh, so do for me, it was exciting. I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about politics or, you know, I've never yeah. been in a mayor's office or, you know, yeah, that's it, pretty high. That's pretty trippy. It stuff. Was exciting. I think I took a picture next to like, cause, uh, the mayor, uh, I mean, that guy's a real piece, man. I don't, you know, oh, never Joe. liked the guy. never met the guy. Newsom never, he never answered a, a yeah. single anything, 
when we were finally working together, you know, it was whatever. You know, his lower cronies who I dealt with, you know, the, the guy never once came through and, and said hello in person. Um, I mean, I, there's very, you know, very little I know of him that doesn't strike me as an asshole. And he looks a little bit like a... You know, he, he's a talented speaker. I mean, even when I first went back to L.A. and, and saw him, I was like, wow, this guy's cool, man. He, this guy really cares, you know, like real heartfelt. And then, you know, but if you, you know, you pay attention long enough and look, it's like, oh, no, he's just, you know, really gifted at making it sound like he gives a crap. And he's just um, in on the game. Yeah, but it know. was it was still exciting. You know, so I, I took a picture so by his, his name plate on the door. I was, you know, mayor's office. I'm like, <laughs> you know, like this is cool. It's, you know. <laughs> Uh-huh. Only, you know, first uh, at the time, mayor's office I'd ever been to. So, so, so you're in there. How long are you in there? How how many days is it to take to get this shit put together? Is oh, it like, man, I don't oh. know. I was, we were there for a few months, just, you know, Ugh. long days, grinding, grinding. Um, and then three- And you're making just truckloads of money at this point. No, not at all. <laughs> That's why I was joking. <laughs> I mean, I, like when those videos went viral initially, you know, and we bought, we got that 125,000 in, like that's, you know, we got a little bit after that, but that's it. Everything since has just slowly trickled in. Um, things have picked up in the last, you know, the last year, you know, but especially when COVID hit, everything pff, tanked, yeah. you know, nobody was doing anything. The last I saw you had, you'd put up 40 houses. Now, I don't, I don't know where you are now. Probably yeah, we're quite some time. I don't know. I don't know, 40, 50, 60. I, I never really kept, yeah. kept count. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and most of those smaller shelters are, are all they're all tucked away private property you know yeah because right? that. after the debacle with the city when they you know take them it's like now it, it's kind of lame but i feel really cool because like once again for a first uh the city of los angeles n- not only changed the law specifically for me once but twice Cool. And that's, you know, it was all negative, but it, that's really cool. Like, Wait, they changed the law that was to your disadvantage. Well, and but and specifically <laughs> because of me, you know what I mean? So like they changed that law twice to bar me from putting houses out. Uh, 5611 was the ordinance. And they, you know, they changed it, like I said, not once, but twice. And although it was, you know, really LA, bad and negative. LA, LA County 5611. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, mean, well, Los, Los Angeles City. Los Angeles City, 5611. Yeah. But dude, that's one of the biggest cities in the world. Yeah. And they oh, changed no. the law for me twice. Ooh, ooh, like, ooh. Dude, you should, yeah. that, honestly, that's that's crawling up somebody's ass in the it's city. It's kind of cool, man. I mean, you know, hence why I probably had to wear that vest for a year. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it was cool. You know, whatever. Like, um, you, sh- you know what, dude? Here's a situation. I'm gonna, let me just bring this up. You should have shaved a mohawk and grown in a full head of hair. Be incognito. Yeah, maybe. I like my hairstyle. <laughs> I've had too. it most of my I, life. And, no, everything I've seen know? from you. Oh, I do too. I'm just busting your balls. But, you know, I'm thinking, how do you go and cog? Shave the beard, shave the head, regrow everything in? Yeah, well, so I, did, I didn't have the beard at all before. This, I, know, this was yeah, a I noticed COVID that. Thing. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, it's uh, the first beard I've had in my life. It's uh, yeah. fun. I like it. Yeah, because the minute you walked in, I'm like, that's not the guy. So, right. You know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Uh, so so now, um, so now now where where are we now? You know what? Uh, no, I want to circle back for a minute. Tell me a little bit about you know where were you born? What went you know what went on? I know you played some music, so maybe in a couple little chops and pieces, can you move along? Just tell me. So tell I was me a wee little lass back in the day. <laughs> it all started one summer evening. Uh, I, yeah. may, I may have been in that bar with you, you know? I, uh, I know what you're saying. I was uh, born and raised in California. I was born uh, in Modesto, California. Yep, I know it. Um, let's see, yeah, I don't know. I, we, uh, we moved around a bunch. Wasn't, wasn't an army brat or anything, but my, my father's business just, I don't know, had to, had to pop around. So What was his business? Uh, the flooring, flooring industry. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just... Uh, Hopped around for a while, moved here and there. I uh, um, had a wild hair that, like, we, me and an old friend were uh, going to get roadie jobs for the band Bush okay, back Bush in the day. And we just, like, packed all our shit up and jumped on a plane and went to London. We're like, yeah, oh, we're out. We're in it. We're yeah, in it now. We're going. And, you know, and as soon as we get there, like, we're, you know, we totally lied. You know, they're like, how long are you here for? And we're like, uh, a week. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they were just like, yeah, whatever. Like, no, you go home. And we were, so, well, I mean, did you did you get even a chance to play over there? No, 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 
no. We, I mean, we got there. They took our, they held our passports, and they were like, "You can't come oh, in." And, and, oh, you know, oh. like, we, we both had like all this luggage. You know, we were moving there, like, <laughs> and we're telling them, "Yeah, we're only here for a week." And they're just like, they were like, "Uh huh, yeah, sure." And um, what, so, what so are we, you, what are you smuggling? Right, then? right. Something, something's so we, wrong here. We begged them to like just let us in, and and uh, they they said we could go out for the night. Oh. You know, they're like. <laughs> You can go out and have a good time tonight, but you be back here at 10 a.m. You're on a plane going home. And we were so, like, devastated. And, you know, we... You <laughs> Coming know, home, like, huh. <laughs> right, you know? And so, like, but I mean, we went out and, you know, had some drinks and we're just, like, you know, live, live in the town and, and, uh, and pe- you know, telling people the story. And they were like, you know, that's odd. You're American. Like, they always let Americans in. And they were like, well, just don't go back. And we're like, we can do that? Oh, you can go back. Well, I mean, they, we, you know, they just said, don't go back to the, you know, because like the customs in the airport said, be back here at 10 a.m. Oh, no, no, I'm okay. Okay. I thought you were saying when you got back to. Oh, to America. No, no. no. They were just like, go out, have a good time, but come back to the airport tomorrow and you're you're going home. And, you know, so we went out and got drunk and people were like, don't go back. And we were like, yeah, right. We're like, we we can do that. I don't have to go back. (laughs) All right. So we stayed. We were like, yeah, we stayed and. Like, you know, rocked in London for three and a half months until we ran out Get of out. money. and So you just stayed. Yeah, we just stayed. Dude, you went dark. Totally. <laughs> yeah, I, I was 19, my buddy was 17, and we just like, you know. We, Mindless. Yeah. Just didn't care. We got some jobs at some like, um, you know, shady club and like just, <laughs> you know, hung out. And one cool thing is I got to meet, uh, well, not meet, I I stood really closely to Princess Diana before she really? she died. Yeah, it was cool. I have wow. one picture. Really? Yeah. She's really? you know, she's in the background, you know, but uh-huh. it was cool. You know? Right, yeah. It's it's way cooler now because I knew nothing about her then. And, you know, now there's all kinds of documentaries and st- mm-hmm. you know, shows and series and But did you know at all who it even was? I just knew that she was a princess or you know, and I was like, there's a princess right there. This That's is cool. pretty powerful shit. Yeah, we don't have know? princesses, you know. No, but yeah, look, I mean, we got a bunch of prima donnas. But, oh, you know, <laughs> we ain't got nobody. You know, uh, we don't, we ain't got a princess. No, we don't have one. No, we don't have a prince either. Yeah. No, wait. Oh no. Okay, we there. There's people named princess and prince. Well, but yeah, we ain't sure, got yeah. one. We're not taking one in. Uh-huh. But anyway, so yeah, we just you know we ran around and then we got you know ran out of money and we just then we finally you playing music over there. Went home. Nah. Okay. No, nah, we just. Uh, we just ran around like Had idiots, fun. you know, kids, yeah, just oh. having fun. That must have been fun. It was. It was cool, you know. Yeah. I mean, and, and until until we ran out of money, and it wasn't cool. You well, know? then things then we were sleep, sleeping in call boxes over there. And mm-hmm. anybody build you one of them tiny houses? No, <laughs> no, that would have been. We ought to stayed longer. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, never <laughs> left. Right. Yeah. Then the G man would be like, take the house and the people in it and put it on a boat and right. get it the hell out. Yeah, of here. totally. Sink it out there. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, no. I mean, if I, you know, I mean, I was nineteen. I, you know, thought I knew everything, but really knew nothing. So now you started. You became a bit of a musician for a while. Is that right? Ah, well, that's you know, that's what they say. That's what they tell me. Uh, well, so yeah, I heard you were awesome. I don't. I mean, I I sing in the shower a whole lot. And <laughs> I've tinkered with a few bands. That's about it. You know. No, but I mean, all kidding aside, what, were you a singer, guitarist? What were you? No, really. That's I, I'm being honest. Like I I I sing a bunch. I've I've sang on a few. You know. Uh, few records you know backgrounds and that's it mm-hmm. like you know i've tinker tinkered around with a few bands and not a whole lot but you know it's like i i, I told that story you know in the beginning when i had all that media and it's like mm-hmm. i was just like ah you know i i, I mean I even told him i was like i have a guitar i've had it for like you know years and i don't know how to play two chords and <laughs> And but somehow it's like you know L.A. musician you know yeah that saves that, the city yeah, you know, I, know like, I saw all that and I'm like I, you know <laughs> I fell for it too because because I've had a few there's a guy named Aaron Sprinkle I don't know if you know him or not yeah, yeah. pretty I had him on here oh cool and so I thought I was going to be talking to you and you were going to be like oh I you know at seven I found the love for it and was stripped away by this you, you know, know social issue I wanted that to be my story you know. <laughs> Make it up. Be like, oh yeah, I played shows with Blink and MXPX, and you know, yeah, we're like this, you know. <laughs> Not true. It never came to fruition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. okay. You Listen, know what? You know, uh, somewhere in mid next year. Right on. I'm gonna cut it out. Yeah, you know, you know and, and then yeah. I'll be like, I am officially a musician now. <laughs> yeah. Or no, the thing to do then is just dump your project. Just walk. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
<laughs> just yeah. you know, boom. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. Be- I'm gonna go Bieber style, man. I'm just gonna yeah. like, you know, sing in the shower. Or, you know, my wife's gonna capture me in the background singing. She put it on oh, YouTube yeah. and it'll blow up. Let huge me let me ask I'll be you. Like, great. Now I gotta like be a singer. I got a question for you. <laughs> um, your wife. What? Well, like, are you in LA? You're married in LA. Yeah. Or you, she's your your. Well, so you're married. Yeah, yeah, I'm married. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any children? I mean, mostly. We're, we're, we're a domestic partnership. Okay, okay. And, uh, we'll do the real wedding thing yeah, later at some whatever. point. Any children? No. Okay. No, she's, she's got a child. Okay. From well, previous. That, whatever, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and so now, what's her reaction? I mean, you're putting a goddamn vest on. <laughs> you know, she must have been a little bit like, hey, honey. She's a Midwest girl. Okay. Um, And uh, she thought I was kind of a conspiracy, conspiracy theory nut. Okay. <laughs> when when we first met, I'm, I I'm telling no her this stuff. She was like, "Yeah, okay, you know, mm-hmm. sure, buddy, <laughs> right, gotcha." Uh, until she came, I'll and, stick and, around, and, right. but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Until she, uh, you know, came and worked with me, and then was just like, you know, mind blown. You know, like she's like, "You weren't kidding." I was like, I "Told you." <laughs> but <laughs> you know? she has to go out and make a buck for you. What? She has to go out and make some money because you got to live your life. Oh yeah, she's got a good job. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, we're we're still just barely above poverty. The yeah. poverty line's eighty grand now. Holy shit! Yeah. In L.A. <sighs> go figure. It's what's well, it's seventy in L.A. and eighty in Orange County, and we're like we live on the border, you know. Mm-hmm. So whatever. We're you got to get. You know, then you got to move to the place where you're not poverty, so you can be, you know. You can be with the upper class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think classes are stupid. Oh, I'm only shit. Listen, they're fucked up. It doesn't you know? There's very rich people here. Clearly, yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's of, tons of rich people yeah. everywhere. I mean, that's you know, the whatever, socioeconomic but. divide. That's you know, that's just a reality. You know, you got to have seventy or eighty thousand dollars to live. Well, there we go. There's a, there's a, you know. Yeah, well, and, and in Southern California, I mean, if you're not making uh, like a hundred and twenty-five minimum. You know, you're, you're super paycheck to paycheck. I mean, yeah. it's ridiculous, you know? Yeah. So now, if I recall correctly, you're giving some thought to moving out somewhere else just to cut the cost. Well, both to cut the cost and uh, just because we, like, we want a homestead and uh, live in nature. Like, we want, okay. our, we want our own trees, you know? There's no trees mm-hmm. down there. Shocking. So, so um, but as, it's stupid. It's like, we can move to the sticks uh and i'm gonna build our own shop um uh, manufacture everything and then drive it back uh and across the country wherever and that is still cheaper than renting a warehouse in los angeles i wow. mean you know for something minimal in size it's twenty thousand bucks a month um wow. and so just, how far away are you gonna be? i guess you're gonna have to be within three or four hundred miles or can you get um, where does where does trees start showing up yeah <laughs> well <laughs> the trees uh don't really show up i mean I'm, I can drive an hour from my, you know, hour and 20 minutes from, from my house in Long Beach yeah, sure. uh, and find trees, but um, there's nowhere in California that that can happen. California is just ridiculously expensive. In Arizona? The, uh, we could, but um, I like to visit Arizona, but I don't yeah, want to live yeah. there. You know, I we, was there for business. It never turned me on. We're looking somewhere between Montana and Washington State. Um, now, that's a nice spot. It's gorgeous. The land yeah. is gorgeous, you know, and, and we, we're going to go rural. Um, you know, and nobody cares about rural because nobody's out there. So yeah. it's cheap. I have a handful of friends that moved to Bozeman. Okay. Uh, and then my I daughter- I spent a few years there. Did you? Yeah, as a kid, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went, I went from California to Bozeman. And that's like culturally, you know, yeah. when you're a kid, you know, like hitting a brick wall at 90 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was odd. Yeah, Bozeman has become quite popular. That's uh, right here, It's yeah. not, not as cheap as it used to be. And then my daughter went to college in, in Missoula. All right. And then we had a customer up in a town called Kalispell. What, what's that big lake up there? Oh, shit. I always forget the name of it. Big, huge lake up above Missoula. That's... I think they call it Gorgeous. Okay. What did I call it? <laughs> what did I call it? Well, I don't know. I don't know what they really well, call it. It's just, hell. you know, Montana's Somewhere. just beautiful. Yeah, it's, 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 so you go up there in this town called Kalispell, mm-hmm. little shit town. And there's sure. a couple others, but... I just, the callous spell kind of flipped me out the name mm-hmm. and all that. And on the way up there, you go right by an Indian reservation, mm-hmm. which Indian reservations, we, what we did is we said, hey, Indians, it's all good. Okay. Calm down. We're <laughs> going to give you a reservation. Now, it so happens we are going to find some dog shit land. <laughs> right, right. And you're, but you're going to be happy. I, yeah, it's it's going to be yeah. all good. 
okay, listen, you were near the mountain, but it could be hundreds of years before we're going to build a resort there. <laughs> right, right. You know, we I, have these yeah, I dreams. Know. I, know. You know? I know you think that uh, <laughs> because you were here first that this is your shit. Yeah. Uh, hey, can we have a stream? Oh, don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah, now. right, yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, just pal. calm down. You know, we could put you further out. We could put you further out. But I do, I do agree with you. My wife and I you, took. You know a, what I'd love to see? I'd love to see a movie where the Europeans came here to conquer and got their asses kicked, <laughs> and the whole United States is like Native American and run how like they you know oh. would have ran things like oh. and and in today's time you know like. That would be really interesting. I would love to watch that movie. Well, I'd even act in that movie. That'd be yeah, fun. Yeah, that Why would not? be with your go with the fucking vest. <laughs> no, I mean, because you know, it could be arrows. Right. You, know, you don't know. You got to have a whole new vest. Right. Well, I mean, you know, and if it's now time, then they'd be explosive, you know, arrow tips. You yeah, know? because, but, well, that's right. That's right. It, hmm. It'd just be cool, though, to see what this place would look like, um, you know, with all the native knowledge and, uh, and, you know, beautiful things that they had in their culture. You know, if Europeans came here and what about got their asses kicked instead. Yeah, what's that show, uh, The Man in the Castle, The Man in the High Castle? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was good. Where it was Japanese and, mm -hmm. and uh, right. Hitler, you yeah, know, so you know, German. Yeah, so kind of, you know, same principle same kind principle, of, yeah. You know, and that was trippy. Oh, it was you know, scary. Like, and, uh, scary and right. very easily could have been real. Totally. Aquaman uh, opened today, man. I got to go see Aquaman. It? Oh, Aquaman's oh, on? Oh, yes. Oh, at that... That guy has found a career in that badass look. Oh, Jason's a cool dude, man. He is. I just, he is. I just, um, I just met him a little while ago. Get out. Yeah, he's got his own uh, vodka company. Which apparently, a lot of stars do. Um, Wait, you met Jason, Aquaman, Jason Momoa? How? He's a righteous dude, man. How'd uh, you meet him? Well, so he's uh, he, he's going around. He's on a tour um, promoting Melee Vodka, which is his brand. Um, and uh yeah i just i i had we had a my wife has a friend that worked in one of the stores where he was coming to 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 do his uh signing event and all and so we kind of got the inside scoop and uh she said hey you know he's coming over in town i was like so i, so, I suddenly have that day off yeah <laughs> and, and that was for your for your for your charity no 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 no, no, okay. no, no just it was just meet separate. Him. yeah it was just to meet him i was just like you know nice like, guy yeah love this guy he's cool he's like you know he's, he's a good human so I was just like, you know, I'm gonna go down and meet that dude. Did, he go. doesn't. Is he? He doesn't. Does he seem like Aquaman when you meet him? No, he, he's, he's. I just, mean, he's he, not like being like. Does he wear that outfit? No, no, <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. The trident was like boom, like buy my vodka. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, he, um, the whole like he's actually not that. He's not that guy. No, no, no. He's a, he's a righteous dude, man. He yeah, cares about yeah. the planet. He's uh, you know, slinging um, you know, things that are good. For, you know to help people yeah yeah, yeah. it's a cool dude man and yeah. and he's just got a kick-ass career he's on fire right now good for you him. know he just did, he him. just did uh snl like a few weeks ago i haven't did even he? seen it yet but god love him I yeah mean, you know in yeah, that world cool hit it when it's hot yeah and I, and I got to hang out with him for like you know 0. 0.5 seconds you know it's well, like hey all right on cool yeah, all right yeah bro all right <laughs> you have to pick your chick hey. yeah picture it right i'm out <laughs> next you know it's like all right yeah all my people call your people like <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, can you just give my little, my, my little house project? What? Oh, get, uh, yeah. You know, in the beginning, it was kind of titled that. I wasn't thinking about branding and, you know, company name. I just wanted to help people. And you continue to brand it under that name. The, well, it's the tiny house project. Oh, God in heaven. That's what I, I'm sorry. Take that out. Bridget, kill it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> I just, because I keep, there's some dudes who are people who seem to be knocking the idea off or in other little places doing like what seems like the same thing. Is yeah, that well, accurate? It, that, that's probably accurate. I mean, like, you know, I didn't create any of it. Mm -hmm. I saw other people doing it and was like, okay. I could do that. So okay. I brought it to Los Angeles. Um, you know, circling back to, to what we were talking about earlier, um, I worked at City Hall for months. Um, you know, we we... You know, I laid it all out. This is how it all supposed to work. Three hours before deadline, they pulled the plug. All you know, it was like like we signed the final contracts, handed in. They were supposed to sign and then hand us a check to start building. Um, and they just they gave us a you know no good excuse. Just oh, uh, there's a problem with the lot. We need to find a different location. Um, everything's still on, and they just drug us along for like a year. <laughs> and then and you know, and then uh, you know, and then how pandemic. annoying. So now I always think I'm just. 
I'm just so sarcastic. I'm like, oh, they didn't get the right guy to. Yeah, cut it was him in it was really d- suspicious knows? and weird, and and um, you know, it drug on like that for a long time, and then all of a sudden they just stopped answering phone calls and oh, emails. Great, and we're like, well, what the hell's with that? And a few weeks later, here comes the mayor and a few councilmen, and they're like, hey, look. We've got this great idea. We're going to build tiny houses. Get out. And help people. <laughs> you yeah. guys are genius. Yeah, right. And uh, and they're not even building shit. They're they're buying pallet shelters. Um, and I don't know. I'm like, you know, good for them. But under your organization or have they just kind oh, of no, said no, no. They, they just jacked the whole idea. They took everything, cherry picked what they wanted, gave it to their developer buddies. And now they're building tiny house villages all over Los Angeles uh, for Whoa. millions of dollars. That's Fuck like up. one of the most expensive ones was like eight, eight plus million dollars, you know, and um, see, here's the weird thing. And I don't know why it's, it's been like this since the beginning of ever um, any kind of a government contract or job that you get to jack the price three, four times. Oh, of course. You know, whatever. Not my battle. It's stupid. Shouldn't be. But um, it took me because it's, it's not their money. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? It's easy to spend money. That's not yours. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. But even even at that, you know. Uh, you you have to play in this arena, so you have to jack it up. Um, you know, even at that jacked up price, those those villages don't cost a million dollars. You know, in in reality, you know. So where's the other seven million going? <laughs> right. You don't want to know. Yeah. Well, I, we all know, but yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. Like, so you know, they rocked like that so for that, a while, that, and, know, and and the guy that you know, like uh, Eric Garcetti, who was the mayor at the time, you know, like you know. That guy got promoted, you know, now he's in India, you know, whatever. Thank God, maybe he's better over there. Well, you know, I don't know. It's, but see, that's, you know, they're all they're all friends, you know. They're all, like, partners or friends. And so even even the new mayor now, Karen Bass, you know, she she's like this with the president, you know. How do you fight that, you know? You're, you're not. You lose. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, it's yeah. going to a head yeah. or, or, going. or you add a helmet to the vest and, <laughs> you know, hide in a cave, right. Yeah. So, um but yeah, they're not, you know, I, I had hoped maybe, uh, you know, we could get through with the, the regime change, but, mm-hmm. you know, they still don't answer any calls. So we're just working, you know, doing it ourselves and, um, are you, you know, finding privately? Uh, so are you getting more financially viable? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's slowly building up and, and, and in this next year we're you know, I mean, we're just going to skyrocket. We're going to take off, you know, we've. Um, we got a plan all written out, you know, and, cool. and that, that involves moving, you know, out of state. We're going to move the nonprofit, um, like personally and the nonprofit, and we'll just do it in the same, you know, place. But you're continuing to be LA, LA Metro. Well, I, I, I will continue to, to work and, and help and do things in LA, but, um, when, like we're going to move out of state and, uh, it's just cheaper, you know? And, I wonder if you go somewhere, I'm just, now I'm just in my brain thinking of shit and you may know this but you beat him to the punch this time and you maybe you find some smaller city you know that maybe is in la right absolutely. and you go and say hey i'm looking at doing this you know you know right. I, I don't this is what happened before yeah i mean you they're know, you know they're clean. you know it, it's expanding it's blowing up i mean it's not only a huge business for those looking to downsize and um you know, live smaller, live in tiny houses. Like that's its own industry now. And it's huge. And it's going to get bigger and bigger for a long time because everything and is we, I mean, more expensive we, and people can't afford anything. So. You could play in that market and the... and the. Technically, I could. I mean, you know, it's separate businesses. I mean, I could go build tiny houses for money on the side for myself, sell them and make a paycheck, you know, or also run the nonprofit. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's big business now. And now it's also... Um, you, you know, people were building tiny houses to help the homeless before I came along. Like I said, I saw it and said, hey, I could do that. Yeah. I just kind of, you know, became one of the faces of it because it it blew up in the worst place that needs it the most. Yeah. You know, and so now all over the country, you know, it's happening. People are building and some people are doing it right and doing it for the right reasons. Many are not. They're doing it to, you know, score that government, you know contract because it's lucrative it's there there. right well because we have we there's no safety net in america you know like there's 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 no you know the bottom just falls out you know and if you you land there well too bad for you you ain't climbing back out right so you know it's um but that's a huge problem so a lot of money is being thrown at you know at the issue 
It, it's just mostly landing in the wrong hands. It does. So, but I, we it's get, a very as as a guy who lives outside of <clears throat> Seattle and never, I've never had an emotional attachment to Seattle. I'm a Philadelphian. You know, that's what I am. Sure. Period. I use the city as an entertainment center. Couldn't care less about the Seahawks. Couldn't, you know, all the things you're supposed to do as a Seattle. Right, sure. Number you 12. Know, uh, you know, yeah. no, I'm, I'm just an Eagles fan and a Phillies fan. I'm not freaking out. Uh, you know, game over, game over. But I do like it. But when I go into town, it's mostly for some form of, we go to the theater. We like that. Um, maybe a concert. You know, somebody down there. But I, I, I got to say, I don't like going down anymore. You know, it's just, it's like... It smells, there's tents all over the place, you know, when you're down there with your wife and you're walking along, it's just like, hey, you know, I'm just not comfortable here. Yeah. Um, And I don't know how... It's dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous, you know, and it's, uh, you know, the people down there are people. Yeah. They're people in trouble. They're people in trauma. And, you know, many of them are dangerous. And there, many of them are dangerous because they have to be dangerous. They live on the street. It's a vulture society. You know, there's nobody out there. I mean, there's people helping, but, you know, it's not enough, you know? And so, I mean, if you're in that situation and you have to live there, you got to be cutthroat, you know, or you won't survive. Yeah. It's just, it's not, right. Well, you got no money. The guy who might have something, you go try and take it. Maybe, you know, you know and I mean, that's, why not? you know, and, and, uh, I mean, and that's, it's, it's not right, but what do you do? You know, it like is. if it is, you know? Your your back's up against the wall, so it's you know I I see it and get it from both sides. Well, you know, look, but I, the, I ran a business. I hate to say it, and I sold all my life. Let me tell you what: you're not going to be unethical, but you're 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 you know you're trying to smush other companies. Sure, you know competitively. So I can only imagine what it's like you know on the street when you got nothing, you know, yeah. and and then you're being a little more. Well, it's re- more assertive. It's really tough, you know, and 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 the it's all designed to kind of keep you there, you know. So if like if you hit if you hit the bottom, you know, there's no ladders to just go and climb up. You know? And you were explaining, and I heard this from a buddy of mine back in Philly who used to work for a place called um, I think it was my house. I pardon me if I'm wrong, but he eventually volunteered and then he became a doctor. He just felt like it was a better use of his life all right. due to frustration. But um where was I going on this? I've heard that with you, um, has there been any sense of just, I'm, I'm, I'm wasting my time? Not at all. You know, if I, I mean, my passion is helping people, Mm -hmm. whatever, you know, whatever that is. I enjoy it. I, I, you know, that makes me happy, you know? So Mm -hmm. really you could say I'm selfish. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm doing it for me because I enjoy it. Um, but if I can help one person, um, I mean, that's one life saved, you know? Uh, and, and that's worth it to me. You know, I plan on helping a, a crap ton more than one person. Yeah. Oh, I know what the other question you know, I if, if is. If I can't even um, personally in, like if I can't in person help somebody, you know, just by spreading knowledge and teaching others how to help other people, I can reach farther. So, you know, when I hear that, you know, uh, okay, let, let me ask, because I remember the question I meant to ask you previously. Um, you were explaining, or somebody was explaining, that the fall from being okay to being in a shit street uh, can only be a couple steps away. Oh, man. You know, or one step, and boom, yep. you're there. Big time, man. Big time. Most of the time, it's something, uh, you know, well, it's it's really just medical or financial, you know, but uh, there's other reasons. I mean, Obviously. but yeah, there's, there's so many ways that people end up there. Um, domestic violence, you know, people are trying to escape. Um, financial, a lot of people lose their jobs. Um, I mean, there's, you know, everybody's got a story. Wasn't there some dude who was an engineer? Oh yeah. Oh, I, man, I've, the, I stopped counting, uh, the, the titles, you know, cause we, everything's titles in America. We love, you know, but I stopped counting the different titles of people because you just can't, you know, engineers, teachers, like I've helped every walk of life, you know? That's what my buddy was saying. He was saying to me, this was years ago, he said, you'd be fascinated to, to know that how close we all are to that. We are. You know, I mean, we'll wipe out here, wipe out there. Yeah. You know, uh, and I all mean, of look, a sudden. The, the way our society is run, there's not enough to go around. I mean, which is dumb because in reality, there's plenty to go around. But, you know, the way it's all engineered and, and geared, you know, so it's it's really easy to, to fall behind. I mean, one minute you're just, you're there, you're on top. You're, I mean- Life is good. I make enough money. I'm fine. 
but one little car accident or one little, you know, trip down the stairs or, you know, or another family member and, you know, you're spread really thin. And sometimes, you know, like they say, when it rains, it pours, a few things happen, you know, or even simply a fire, you know, like I was great, you know, had it all, but then a fire and now I have nothing. It takes forever for insurance to well, bring right. home. Yeah. And so what, what do you do in those year, that year or two when you have no money and insurance is taking their sweet time? Yeah, my daughter, it ha- she, you just saw her. Mm-hmm. Took forever. By the way, Liberty, Liberty, go to hell, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they really ran her through the, the you know, the paces, and it was really obnoxious to watch because yeah. it wasn't a lot of money. Insurance companies suck, man. Yeah, they're just, they're, you know. and they, they're planning her, and they're working her. She's married and all, but they're just, it was so much stress. And had we not had a home out there, which when, when, when she's, you know, got a baby and all mm-hmm. my wife, we got a home out there, fortunately we could, uh, and she could stay at our place. You know, it took away a lot of stress. Tons. I mean, but, but if she it, had to go sit her ass in a hotel. And her husband is a commercial fisherman, so he's on the water for like three months. Right. So she's basically alone. If that, if the shit went all down. Right. You know. What would she do? Who knows? You know, could have fucked up a marriage, could have fucked up her, just her mental state. You don't know. Dude, you know, you'd, it's a big you'd, slip. You'd be mind blown. Like, I get, so we get requests for help all over the world. Um, but, you know, mostly here in America right now, but- you know, it's in the thousands and it just keeps coming and it just keeps getting more and more. And it's every story, you know, things like that. I don't have anybody. I didn't have anybody to, you know, or I'm in a hotel right now and I'm using all my savings to, you know, just to stay here, but I'm, I'm running out. My money's running out. What do I do? You know, haven't been able to get a new job. You know, I'm applying every day. I mean, everything you can imagine is out there and and it's happening. And, you know, so to those that don't have that, family or safety net or friends you know or some even do and but that only goes so far yeah you know because the friends are on the edge too right so let's do this my little uh i've been given some element of a warning that we discussed uh my whole body has vibrated due the due to our alarm clock (laughs) (laughs) running out of time (laughs) the candles burning to the bottom here right but anyway uh, on that on that level, real quickly, I saw online the three people who are work, four people who are working with you, and uh, I just was enjoying just reading about them and you know their commitment. Uh, the young lady, I can't remember her name, uh, who has the uh, is it Apicia? Uh, alopecia. Uh, alopecia, um, which I knew mm-hmm. oddly enough, but I saw her on a separate uh, YouTube. That's my wife. Is that, oh, really? Yeah, with bald hair. Yeah. Yep. yep. Oh, very cool. I didn't know that at all, but she was talking about the impact on her as a woman. Right. You know, and, and, you know, I have five daughters and let me tell you what, hair is a major fucking subject. It is. I mean, big time. And so, uh, well, I don't, I I don't, I guess we all have our things, but it was pretty cool just hearing her lay it out there. Yeah. Well, it's it's really hard for women, you know, I mean, and especially because our society is, you know, it's there's blueprints on what is beautiful, uh, how you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to look, you know, and uh, what makes you feminine. And, you know, I t- our, tell our society this. says that, oh, that's with hair and that's with makeup and that's with all this other crap. And, you know, there's there's no dive into like you're beautiful without all that shit. You know, so. I, I, I but well, let's just say this. When I saw her, I thought she was pretty. That's the fact. And I looked into her. With the sense of like, oh, she was some hotsy totsy, good looking chick who chose <laughs> to cut her hair, you know, and, and I had this vision mm-hmm. um, because she was pretty, you know, and I'm like, oh, let me find out what's going on. That may be wrong, but what the fuck? I don't care. That's what I did. Hey. And when I got to the I, four minute thing. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I got my own wife that I love and been married for 33 years. But uh, anyway, but look, we're all, we're cool. Uh, anyway, so I, I found that video. And it just completely, you know, shifted me. And I listened to the whole thing and I'm like, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. You know, well, uncool for her. But uh, I didn't get a chance to look at the other three because I was just kind of rat rushing on. Once I saw, I watched her so long, I was getting tired. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then there was three other people. There was one, Angel Bocino, Angel Bonilla. Yep. Well, Angel something Bonilla. Yeah, Angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's an uh, army veteran. Yeah, uh, does a lot of work with us. He's Good. like, he's super cool, man. Yeah, Angel Bonilla because I thought he was a baseball player. 
<laughs> kind of got that name, right? It was a Bonilla somewhere. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And here comes Angel Bonilla. Two men on, one out. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. But anyway, I, I like that. I can't remember the two other folks, and I'm sorry for those who might be listening here. Um, I was in a hurry last night. No, it's night. totally cool, man. I, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I'm fortunate that I've had many cool people come and help. Um, I always have people want to volunteer, mm-hmm. you know, and come help. And I've done a lot of work with, uh, you know, my wife and Angel and um, um, Joe Liao from the Vet Hunters. Um, cool. So he, he's uh, also, uh, you know, Army veteran. Mm-hmm. And um, so we've done a lot of work together. We had a vets. guy on here called uh, Major Ed, if you get a chance to show it. Mr. Um, Ed? Major Ed. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, he uh, um, arm blown off. No, wait, leg blown off in Iran, uh, hit by an IED. Uh, it, gone on to be a huge, similar to you. Um, been involved in this John Daly thing, which is kind of a trippy guy, but put his, you know, he has spent now his life working with veterans. Cool. And he's really, he's much more, you know, like coming at you. Right, right. You know, Mexican guy, he loves America. You know, that's what you're going to get because uh, his father was in, in, you know, he's a history of people who are basically warriors. Right, sure. And he has great things to say about our country just because of what, you know, how it worked for his family. Right, yeah, his but, experience, uh, yeah. if you get a chance, have your buddy look up just Major Ed. Major Ed, all right. Yeah, he would, I think he would find him at least, uh, and the guy will take a call. The guy will talk to anybody. Angel, start looking that up, man. Yeah, he'll he'll look he'll call you anywhere. You, you'll get on the phone with him. He'll jump on something with you. Cool. He came on this. Hey, you man, know, more, as did you. More, I'm more not the, cool. More the merrier. I'm uncool. I'm just I'm trying to be cool. Did I be cool in this one? <laughs> you're you're only as cool as you want to be, my friend. Oh shit. <laughs> You know what? Uh, go watch Aquaman tonight. Oh, at least the first half hour, I bet you'll walk out feeling cool as shit. I know I'm gonna. I'm, I go I, to I feel movie. cool for days. I've gone to movies. I went to one movie, and we're gonna get out of here soon. I went to one. Uh, what was it called? Blood? No, Blood Diamond. The one with Leo Cap. Caprio. Leo DiCaprio. And take three. DiCaprio. But there was a beautiful this, this beautiful girl in there, and she was talking to him. And I was with my wife, and I said, I think she's looking at me. I was in the movie. I just become entranced with her. You know, she, and, and I told my wife, I said, I think she's talking right to me. I'm completely in this movie. I'm nice. stuck in it. But anyway, let, let's conclude with what I ask everybody before we conclude. Well, before we con- conclude with, before we can, whatever the hell it is. Sure. Uh, why did you do it? How did you do what you did? And why? Well, I mean, that, that could really be, you know, another hour's worth of... Uh, <laughs> existential question right. but you know you could just obviously we don't have but you know how, how did you do this which we've explained to some extent um but in a short shot you know how, what was and then what was this thing in you really most importantly we talked about how but what was this thing inside you that drove you that way there was something in your center or in your heart up in this mess of a head of mine is a beautiful place it's not like earth <laughs> you know and and i want it to be i want earth to be a lot more like what i got up in my head and uh, you know the our society is you know pretty messed up and we, we do some pretty horrific things to each other and uh i i just you know i want things to be better and i i think we're all capable of being better humans and that's really what drives me and, and drove me you know to start you know, is, is, uh, get up, do something, help somebody. Yeah. I don't remember who said it, but you know, you, uh, what's that old saying? It's like hundreds of years old, you know, like everybody, you know, somebody can't help everybody, but everybody can help one person. Oh, I like that now. So I I also liked it. What's up in your head is a beautiful place. That's, that's a cool statement. Very cool statement. Thank you. Well, why don't you just introduce yourself one more time, give your coordinates, how people could either call, look at you, look you up. Uh, Absolutely. Anyways, my, let's give it one more time. My Whatever. name is Elvis Summers, and uh, I build tiny houses for the houseless and veterans. And you can check out our website at thetinyhouse.org. And uh, please feel free to make a donation and help the cause. Yeah, tinyhouse.org. Tinyhouse.org. Listen, uh, man, thanks so much for coming in here. You know, you're, aside from being an enjoyable guy, uh, impressive. Thank you, sir. And I thanks do, for having uh, me. It was fun. You called me sir. 
Thanks, Is that just- thanks dude. Yeah, there we go. Whew. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> Am I that old? Well, now we gotta keep a, we gotta keep a you know a level of cool points, right? So yeah, thanks, bro. Know, yeah, I'm one up on you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks so much, and, and oh, by the way, enjoy your holiday. Hey. Thank-